Kids spoke to the board about the importance of the replacement to the residents of Webster Road. I can't hear a word Pat is saying. <clears throat> Larry, it, in the minutes, it says Larry Creeks spoke to the board about the importance of the replacement to the residents of Webster Road. I would like to interject the word bridge before replacement so that it's clear what that paragraph is about. Replacement. Sounds good. Other than that, I'm That's it. All right, I'd move to accept the minutes as um, amended by Pat. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> I think and... Pat's a little far from the mic. <laughs> well, talk louder, Pat. Is um, we're um, one of our conversations earlier was um, about to continue with our investigation of an improved zoom platform hybrid physical meeting and i think our cameraman here is a guy that we talked to had some advice about that we got more about that after so <clears throat> we had um, a couple guests lined up here and um, bruce has sent a letter that he is not feeling well so he's not coming physically but he is looking for approval of the concept so we can continue planning and getting cost estimates um, for there's a memorial. Armed Forces Monument. Say that again louder. Armed Forces Monument. Armed Forces Monument to be located. To the right of the current, is it a bench? The current monument at the bottom it's, of the cemetery? It's to the left, I think. To the uh, left? To the left beside of the it. Yeah. <laughs> beside it. And at the cemetery. And the here cemetery. is what he's proposing there. So to the left of the of the gate? Is that no to that the to the bench. The left of the bench. Yeah. The in the in Woodlawn Cemetery. Yes. The end. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any Thing to speak on about that. I'm. It sounds um. Sounds good to me. I'm, I'm all for giving him the go ahead to continue planning and and tightening up his um, proposal there. Yes. You hear that, Bruce? Bruce is not here, is he? But he's. We'll communicate that to him. All right. We um have another guest here, um, Larry Strauss. who came all the way down past the closed road. No, it's not closed for you. Um, but um, you're here speaking on something on the, down the line, but since you're here in person, why don't you go ahead and, and address that and hear what you're talking about? Smile. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't have to be on this camera. You're That's on good. That camera. No, I'm just getting a little closer to the mic. Can you hear? Um, I couldn't hear what he said, no. Oh, oh that's okay. <laughs> I'll try harder. So, um, yeah, so I'm really here uh, rep representing you as the select board. Uh, no, not really. And uh, Ridgeline Outdoor Collective. Um, I... Really, maybe if we tip this to them a little bit better. Um, and uh, so the... Uh, Testing. Hello. Can you hear him? Hello. Hello. Now I can hear you. Hello. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the orientation. Now I can hear you. Yeah. Um, the um, so the uh, town of Randolph, it, in in a, in conjunction with the town of Rochester and Braintree, are uh, proposing to submit a uh, letter of intent uh, with, uh, with a consortium application for a Vorek grant to the state of Vermont. Um, uh, and Vorek is the uh, Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative grant. Um, so this is the second time that the state has uh, funded these grants. Randolph received the first one, um, which was, they were the only one to receive the uh, original Vorek grant. So the state now has a pot of uh, $5.1 million that they uh, are looking to uh, give out. Uh, they're looking at um, funding 
around 25 different projects. Um, and so the first step in that process uh, will, is the submission of these letters of intent. Um, Ridgeline Outdoor Collective uh, is a uh, what is a part of the process as a nonprofit outdoor recreation uh, organization uh, that will partner with this consortium of towns um, in working on um, furthering the development of the Vellamont Trail, connecting uh, the, the three towns. And part of the uh, vision in the submission uh, will also include a, uh, a hut in downtown Randolph. Um, the Rochester portion um, primarily is uh, continuing uh, the trail uh, from the top of Randolph Gap down into Little Hollow is the Rochester piece of this. So just looking tonight um, for support from the board uh, to, for um, submitting the LOI. Uh, on behalf of the three towns. Hello? Someone had a question or no? Hi, this is Catherine. Oh, I, I, it blanked out, the sound blanked out right when you were talking about a hut, and I didn't know what the location of the hut was going to be. Yeah, so the proposed location right now uh, is. Um, behind the, uh, the Gear House bike shop, it right in downtown uh, Randolph. And, and I, should I should also add that, you know, this is a, uh, a there no, no municipal funds are involved here. It's, there's no match to the grant. It's a 100% grant. So no, no town funds are required from any of the towns. Um, um, excuse me, Larry, your voice did black, blank out on me again, too. And am I correct that you said um, the proposed location of the big shop? Is that Randolph Village? Yes. Yes. Okay. I heard something about Gear House, and then that's all I heard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yep. We heard the beginning and the end of what you said, and you could fill in the blanks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's We're all yeah. interpolating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you're looking for is for the select board to support Rochester's participation with Brain, Randolph and Brain Duty in this? That's correct. Yeah. Right. And this is the first step in the process. And right now, it's just a, a letter of intent. Uh, and then the, um, the state will review the letter, letters of intent that they receive and call those. Um, and then there will be a final application process later this fall for the ones that are selected. So it sounds interesting to me. Yep. It sounds like a, a, we have to. It's a good thing to go forward, I think. It doesn't cost us anything. No. I have a little question. Sure. Um, the original speak up. The original proposal um, did speak about uh, the Vellamont Trail having feeder trails down to every town along the way. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, the in intent of the Vellamont Trail is for the trail to go from town to town. Okay, that part of the project is is not in place yet. Well, yes, no. Yes. This would be part of that. This, I mean, process. this yeah. this okay. is exactly this part, of that. Yeah. I mean, part of it. Well, this it's... this is trying to extend the trail into Randolph. Into Randolph. It's connecting Rochester. Do we have a trail that goes from the top of the mountain to Rochester right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, through Riley Bostwick. Yeah. Um, 
and then on uh, pieces of road and other existing trail. Down to, to the, the ranger, forest service? To yeah. the ranger station yeah. and, and beyond. into town, too. And into town. Yeah. 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 So this is continuing it northward. Yep. Perfect. Is there any maps on all of this? Yeah. Uh, Fire department really should have set because if there's a rescue to be made, you want to know where to go. Where you gotta go. Yeah. yeah. So on the yeah, I mean, um, well, let's finish this piece of it, and I'd be happy to answer that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you two decide on this because I should probably recuse myself since I have a bike shop and this is a bike trail. It's um. You know, so I'll let who's you guys talking? Know that. that was me, Dune. The owner of the bike shop in town, so therefore I'm going to recuse myself from voting on this this particular. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I propose that the the town of Rochester does place their support for the new application to V O R E C grant program for the Velamont connectivity, including a hut in Randolph. Second. All right. We'll second that. All in favor. All right. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Off and running. Go get it. So to, to answer Terry's question, uh, on our um, on the Ridgeline website, um, there there is a uh, our our maps uh, available now um, that are downloadable. A in addition, there. Uh, Angus has actually prepared a first responders map which shows um, not only the trails themselves but uh, access roads uh, that are separate from the actual bikeways or skiways. Um, That'd be good. Yeah. If, I think you'd want to get those to all the other towns too. That, yeah. that that's you know and the ambulance service. That's right. Yeah. They, they it yeah. It's all it's all there. It's it's yeah. in the process. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome very yeah. much. Thank and, you for And your I work. will stay around to yeah. answer a few ARPA questions what that comes up. That yeah. come up. Okay. Thank you. Or update. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So we've been cheating that I, I believe are here to um, talk about the um, the process of selecting a consultant to perform a feasibility study for the former Rochester High School building. Um, we have, I saw one proposal, is that correct? Do you wanna to speak to this some? Yes, thank you. So Catherine and I are both here to uh, speak to this. I'll, I'll give you an overview comment and ask Catherine to jump in and add to or correct what I have to say is maybe uh, the case. Uh, just to go back in time a bit, uh, in April, the select board applied for a planning grant with the Vermont Community Development Program to assess the feasibility of a program of, of uh, function in the building itself and, and how that might be paid for. Uh, the grant was awarded, uh, making up to $50,000 available. Um, Two Rivers was selected to be the grant administrator. So it's um, being administered in, uh, by someone other than the town staff. Uh, and that administrative cost is being paid for out of the grant proceeds themselves. Um, a request for proposal was issued to a number of consulting firms in July to provide feasibility uh, analysis and uh, conclusions and facility planning services. Um, in August, uh, uh, responses were received. Uh, several firms said they were just too busy. Uh, some we didn't hear from at all. Uh, only one uh, provided a complete uh, proposal. And uh, we have uh, interviewed, a group of us interviewed this uh, company, um, spoke with references and uh, feel very good about uh, what we learned. And uh, we're gonna talk about that a bit as well. The, the actual tasks uh, to be performed uh, in terms of the, the work plan would be, um, well, there's five 
sort of globally speaking. One is uh, feasibility, and, and you may recall from having seen the uh, the proposal or uh, the plan for uh, the building that that this volunteer committee put together. It includes uh, childcare, senior services, a maker space, arts and learning, and uh, shared office space. Um, so the first task is to assess the feasibility of that. Does it is it going to work as uh, Consideration. Secondly, is a master space plan, and in conjunction with the uh, the uh, primary uh, consultant, there's an architecture firm based in Montpelier who would uh, do the facility aspects of this work. The third is a, a master facility and capital improvement plan. You're looking at the condition of the building. What would it take to make the building functional for these purposes? Not to make it into an elementary school, but to make it functional for the purposes in the in the proposal. Uh, fourth task is to prepare a budget and a profit and loss statement. And fifthly, a high level um, assessment of uh, potential funding sources uh, for the facility. Um, the company we spoke with that is called Fairweather Consulting Company based in uh, New Paltz, New York. And uh, they, and both separately and together with uh, the architecture firm uh, based in Montpelier, they've done a number of these- Where did you say where they were from, excuse me? New Paltz, New York, in the Hudson Valley. Thank you, Dave. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, they've done a number of projects of this type of repurposing school buildings and other facilities, as well as uh, uh, projects uh, repurposing other buildings and community planning. They've done a number of projects in Vermont, as well as in the rural uh, New York State. Um, and that is their area of expertise, um, is community development projects in rural, rural settings. Um, we liked their work plan. Uh, we, we thought that uh, the owner, the company, uh, Peter Fairweather, had a realistic assessment of uh, both the challenge and the opportunity in this particular project. Uh, we talked about, uh, in, we invited him to also bring to us other ideas that he may have for uh, programs or concepts that would draw people and revenue from outside the valley, in addition to the things that we've been talking about in the proposal. So. Um, uh, he, they will they will do that as well uh, once they get familiar with the project. Uh, very important uh, in terms of his methodology is both the data analysis and the, the population dynamics and and uh, other forms of data, but also getting community input. Um, and so he is very um, uh, interested in and and will uh, work with us in conducting community. Uh, based meetings to get input from uh, people in Rochester in the area to, uh, uh, you know, explore the, the depth of interest in these kinds of programs and what concerns or issues or opportunities people have in mind. So that community engagement component of their work is, uh, is very important uh, uh, to the project. Uh, their cost uh, that they proposed uh, was within uh, the budget. However, in the discussion, uh, we talked about the timing uh, that we want to bring to our town meeting in March as solid a recommendation as we can make based on the, the data, the analyses, their recommendations. Um, and he's a little concerned about the time it would take to get to that point. So he's gone back and uh, he's revising his work plan and, uh, and there'll be some adjustment to the fee, though uh, we believe it will be within the limits of the grant. Uh, to come forward uh, with a proposal that will have uh, a real meaning and utility for the uh, for the uh, town meeting in uh, in March. However, I would also say that uh, because we expect there to be community engagement in this process between now and then, this should not come as a surprise in terms of an item being on the agenda for that town meeting. Um, the uh, submitted cost was thirty nine thousand two hundred thirty three dollars, which is within the budget of the grant. Um, and uh, we are recommending this firm with a uh, budget of uh, not to exceed $47,000. And uh, I'll explain that. Uh, so the grant is for $50,000. And there's also a community match of 10%, uh, which is $5,000. Uh, we're not asking the select board to provide those funds. 
this would be um, community-based donations. Uh, we've already got uh, pledges of $2,000, so we're well on the way and having really scratched the surface. Uh, In-kind service is also eligible to make the match. So uh, people who work professionally in fields like Catherine in senior services and, and Dick Robson in architecture, even though he's retired, that can count towards uh, the in-kind match. Um, so uh, so $50,000 of a grant, uh, the cost of the two rivers to administer the grant is about $6,000. Uh, that leaves 44,000 uh, available. And um, then with the, we expect about 3,000 in cash, maybe a little more from the fundraising. So, so we're recommending that we, uh, that you approve going forward with Fairweather Consulting with a, uh, a, a, a cost not to exceed $47,000. Uh, that was a unanimous recommendation of everybody on the core team. So let me stop there and Catherine, anything else or you wanna to go to questions? Well, I also mentioned uh, the John Copin's uh, project for the climate economy model community. And in that meeting that happened a week ago, Wednesday in the, in the town offices, um, Jeffrey Gephardt brought this up uh, to John and asked how we were going to also, because John's very aware of the work, the community work done so far in repurposing the high school and uh, John is very sensitive to that. And Peter was very willing to work with the overlapping. So we're uh, giving him John's contact information with the concern being that you can, I mean, the community engagement piece is important. Obviously with the select board uh, needing to have a town consensus on, on acquiring the building, uh, community engagement and giving people an opportunity to express their opinions, their concerns, their, you know, uh, desire, even prior to the vote is very important, but there is the possibility of having too many community engagement events. If John's doing some and, and, uh, and, and we're, and Peter's doing others. So we're going to try to dovetail some of these and include, uh, the, the energy piece in the high school piece as well. So. Uh, but Dick pretty much covered everything. Um, so anybody have any questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, so um, I'm uncomfortable with a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, I'm uncomfortable with having one vendor. Uh, I, I also think there's a difference between community engagement and community information. I think the select board or the committee or whoever ha has not, not uh, out of courtesy, but a duty to be totally transparent about this and to provide the most possible information about this as possible. And I don't feel like that's happening. This is Rob Gardner's subjective opinion. So that's, you can take it or leave it. But, but I, I'm uncomfortable with the amount of information that I personally have and, and I have paid attention to this. This is gonna, has the potential for being quite expensive to the town. And I'm not hearing out front as a foreground item cost and, and well, risk. Can I'm I, not here. Wait, can I respond me, to you, Robert? Because uh, the whole wait, point wait, of the feasibility wait, study is to get some wait, of that information. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. Uh, and, and what I'm hearing, and, and to be quite honest, too much of what I'm hearing from the committee tends to be cheerleading for, for an established point of view rather than looking at the, at the other unknown questions here. So all I'm saying is that, that, that there's a lot of information before we ask the town to, to vote on the cost, the potential risk and cost on this, all that stuff ought to be in the foreground, in my opinion. The other idea is this might work, that might work, uh, but everybody needs to really understand, I believe it's a duty, it's a duty of the, of the select board and the committee to make this money information in the foreground, make people understand what it is. Uh, uh, and I, I don't feel that that's been done. And that's the end of my diatribe for today. Well, the point of the feasibility study is in fact to go into a depth about not only the cost of capital improvements, but also the cost for sustaining 
uh, the, these programs, what the viabilities of these are. And we, we spent uh, a good portion of the meeting today talking very much about the importance of this kind of information so that the town is fully informed. So we have no disagreement with your position, Robert. We agree with you that financial information is key. I did read in the proposal, in the proposal it did state that, um, and so they're going to evaluate the proposed uses that have been generated by the committee, but also um, we're going to expand that in, especially in light of if finding some of those ideas are not viable, they were also going to expand their, their view. So it's not just um, analyzing for those specific uses, but it was going to be a little bit of a broader perspective on that, which That's I found right. heartening because it's if it's just getting a study to back up uh, an already assumed position, that's kind of limiting. So I, I think that was an important piece of their proposal that that stood out to me. But in, yes. in response to the Catherine made that point that the kind of information you're asking for is coming up with. I, I also was um, not surprised, but it's a little disappointing to only have one proposal. Um, it's not surprising given the fact of what's going on in Vermont right now. I mean, we knew before we even got the award when Vic was doing some outreach to um, quite a considerable number of consultants in this area. And out of that list, there were only five that were even available during the time frame that we have. We're on a very tight schedule because we're working with, with the school board as well. So um, we, got, we got responses from people saying, we'd love to, you know, put a bid on this, but quite frankly, we just can't do your timeline. If this were for 22, we could do it, you know? So it, it, we're, the, the, the good thing is, is that the one consultant that we have is actually, he's kind of perfect for us. It really is. It, it really, we really like it. I'm just saying, I'm telling you what I'm hearing. I'm as a voter in the town. Uh, and, and you know I'm skeptical, skeptical about this stuff. So I think the idea of money and risk needs to be in the foreground. People need to understand this. And I'm not hearing that from you guys. You know, I think there's a tendency from the committee to be cheerleaders for a point of view. It sounds like that to me. All I'm saying is that there's serious risk for the town involved in this, whatever the, whatever the, uh, the results of this, of this study or whatever they are. But there could be serious benefit to the town, Robert. And one of the things I would like you to be a little bit more open to the possibility that this could also be very beneficial to the town. It's, it's you know, there could be a greater risk at you're, not doing this. Catherine, you're cheerleading on this. I am, I am responding to you, Robert, because I'm just asking you to stay open. Stay open to the potential of what this could be. Okay, so I think we've got the, the input that we need to move forward on just the decision you're asking now for a decision whether or not we will the select board will accept in in this proposal to spend not our money right this is a grant this is not money coming out of the town's pockets at this point this is money that was accessed to by um, a study to present more information so the town as a whole can make a decision. This is not a final decision that the select board's gonna make. This is gonna be a town vote, I think, so. That's right. Um, it's about getting information to inform the voters. Yeah. So I'm correct if I say that what you're going to vote on is um, approving, um, bringing the, the committee's suggestion to bring in this consulting firm to do the work. No. Fair, fair weather consultants. Right, fair weather consultant. Retain this consultant. consultant right. firm. Not, not the suggestion to bring in a consulting firm. We've already done that. I, I can't hear. We've already, we've, already, we've already approved soliciting the firm. Now we're approving a specific proposal Correct. from fair weather consulting. That's right. Yeah. We're so. going to be hiring them. With your, you're going to be hiring them because it's your decision to do yeah. it. Yeah. Right. On our recommendation. But with somebody else's money. 
<laughs> the money that we've so, been, with so, the money that we've been granted. Yes, we've been granted. So I, I'd, I'd move to approve. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for everyone's work on this and everyone's input and concerns. It's all taken a note. And, and I and I will be working closely with this firm as well. So if there if there are any concerns, Rob Gardner, you you can share them with me. Okay. We didn't hear that, Beth. But I think I think you said you're going to be working closely with the firm. That's what you said. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All righty. So, um, onward. Um, we have um, Joan. What have you got for us tonight? Um, okay. Um, First, some updates on Mason Brook. Uh, paving, uh, well, the, you know, they'll probably know that the uh, culvert is all fully installed as of last week. And the paving originally was scheduled for today, and then there was a rain delay from the weather last week. And the last I heard was on Friday is that the paving is now scheduled for tomorrow. Um, though I don't. Um that's still uh, because of I, I believe that is is now Thursday Thursday okay yeah um uh so and the guardrail uh the last latest I heard also last Friday from Michelle uh the contractor was that the subcontractor was aiming for Thursday also uh for installation right so we are at Friday they're at they're at Friday for the guardrail, <laughs> so we're uh, anticipating um, formally reopening the road for this weekend. Eh? We're hoping so. Yeah, you yeah. know if it, okay. that comes right. to pass. So yeah. Uh, so the, the discussion we had last late last week is um, I guess we're past that now. You don't need to make a decision about when you want to open the road. That's all. We're done with that. Yeah. So uh, if I said that the. the the goal is to open the road formally this weekend if all goes well? Sure. Okay. Okay, good. If all Thank goes you. according to plans. According to plan, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only other thing I have is uh, an update. We're correcting the record on the West Hill Bridge. Um, first, an update is that uh, we were short a little bit of funding for the design phase. Um, we have, a, we had a grant from the forest service of $60,000 and the contract is for 63,553. Um, and so forest service was just recently able to come up with some additional funds so that now we're fully covered for the contract amount. Um, so it's an additional $3,553. And in addition, what I need to, um, Correct is from the last meeting. Um, my understanding was that there was no set time frame for construction, um, but it turns out now that Forest Service does have money for construction, and their plans are full speed ahead for installing the new bridge next summer. All right. That's it. All right. That's good news. Thank you. We, have you put out word to those folks up there at all, Joan? Um, no, I meant to do it today and I didn't, but I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joan. Um, Tony, what's, what's cooking at the library? Uh -huh. Well, let's see. The cookbooks are ready. All right. uh, on sale. Uh, they're being sold at the library, at the bakery. The uh, What is he saying? The cookbooks are ready from the library. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, they're on and sale. Tony, can people just buy them or at the library or are they for sale at, somewhere else? Oh. At the bakery, at the where else? The bookery. The bookery. And the cafe. And the cafe. $15 each. $15. Or two for 30 Get them while yeah. they're hot. <laughs> 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 All right. Three for 50. They won't say I'm doing free advertising. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can say where to get it. 
All right. Was she okay with that? Yeah. And then so. the library is open uh, at regular hours, but uh, with a strong mask recommendation. Did you hear that? The library is open for regular hours with a strong mask recommendation. So, I think that's all I need to say, except you should keep track of the Herald uh, because you get the best information there and most up-to-date information on did, the Herald. Did you hear that, Martha? No. He said you should <laughs> definitely keep checking on the Herald because that's where you get the best and most up-to-date information on Quite what is happening in the library. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure you heard that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And I just have a question here. Uh, have you heard you know, any more I about? I ask a lot of questions, but I, I try to get things right. So. The roof. About the roof. Have it. Have it. But I will be in touch with the guy. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yep. Is it still leaking? The last time I was up there, it wasn't leaking at all. No, it doesn't it leak when it doesn't rain. And but, you know, <laughs> and there was a, there was this was right after a rainstorm and yeah. there was no no I know it, it, it's so I, it's weird I, it's very unpredictable yeah, yeah. so really there's is. something yeah. weird about that yeah no it's it's I got it okay, okay. and how right. about painting any of the buildings town buildings anywhere we can't get anybody we haven't been able to I've been after it but there's just no one available that we gotta can get yeah so I'm I haven't lost it yet but I, I will <laughs> okay. keep working on it all right thank you you're thank welcome you. um, I think we've kind of covered the highway already tonight but um, Terry anything on utilities just no no water's good toilets are flushing and we don't have our energy coordinator here so I'm going to move back on to the request for the town's permission for household hazardous waste day on September 18, 2021. Which, as you know, that's when you can come and drop off old, unused buckets of paint and nasty, mysterious things that have collected in your basement. I'd, I'd move to give permission for this. I second it. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, June, just question, is that going to be at the town um, office parking lot? Yeah, like yeah, 67 School Street. And now since the um, recycling is weekly, they'll have to divvy up the parking lot appropriately. Yeah. You don't know what time that might be? It's usually... Same hours as the dump, I'd Dump's say. the same as the dump, yeah, you know, morning. It doesn't go... 8 to 11 is what the dump, what the garbage... Yeah, I think it's it's focused on the morning. Um, it doesn't say on here what the, what the hours are, but I wouldn't go in the afternoon. Go in the morning. I'm sure there'll be advertisements around, so you'll... Yeah. All right, and on the old business, we had the driveway permit for Dave Kennett on Liberty Hill Road and after some back and forth with Cooter and I he's um, moved it to where we're comfortable for it so I think we should approve that one All right. it's in here somewhere uh, so tag. I'd move to approve second all in favor all right and is there anything else from the um, the gathered masses, either online or in person? Um, you don't mention the next day or the next meeting, but I'm assuming it's Monday, the sept September 13th. It wasn't on the agenda. Um, it's not on the agenda, so I guess um, we'd have to Monday. have to verify that. I don't okay. know. It'd be the 13th. The 13th? The second and fourth. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, the 13th. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for everything you do and being part of our wonderful town. Good night. Thank you for everything you guys do. Yeah. Very much appreciated. Thank you for asking.
answering all my questions. And thank you for being the techie person. <laughs> no problem. Good night, Martha. Take care.